In the bustling city of Anlen Town in Pennsylvania, a small African restaurant called the Judas Kitchen has emerged as a hidden gem. Judah is my grandson. Da is from Dani, grandmother. So this is Judah's grandma's kitchen. Founded by Tina Simba Ojiem, a resilient and passionate Kenyan woman, the restaurant has quickly become a hub for authentic African cuisine. When I thought of starting a restaurant, it was just a Kenyan restaurant. But when I got my license, I immediately changed it to an African restaurant. And um, I get a lot of support from the Africans around here because I think there was a big need for an African restaurant. Allentown is a city rich in history and diversity. It has always been a melting pot of cultures. Allentown is regarded as the third largest city in Pennsylvania. Uh, but for many years we have never had a taste, a delicacy from Kenya. Originally known for its industrial roots, the city has undergone a transformation over the years. With a diverse population, Allentown has become a haven for culinary experiences from around the world. For just almost a year now, we are enjoying one of the best restaurants. She does Kalalu, the one from Jamaica. She does also cassava leaves from West Africa. She does fufu, uh, name it. So this is a place where we are supposed to be like Babylon. Tina Simba Ojiem affectionately known as Tina by her friends and customers, had always possessed a deep love for cooking. Her daughter Kathy explains. Well, growing up, my mom has always loved cooking. It's something that she's passionate about. Um, her, one of her famous meals that she started out with where she would cook for fam um, family and also like community events was goat meat and it became very popular to a point where it was a running joke that the goat meat would disappear and um, somebody would ask like, hey, can I help carry it? Next thing you know, the goat meat is all gone. So from there, people really knew that my mom's food is like really good and um, goat meat quickly became her, her favorite and it's one of her customer favorites. It wasn't until she lost her job during the devastating COVID-19 pandemic that she decided to turn her passion into a business. So I said, you know what, let me just give it a shot and work for myself this, this time around instead of working so hard for other people. And uh, I opened this restaurant November the 6th of 2021. And uh, a year and a half later, you can see the Judas Kitchen was the best of 2023. This is amazing. It is always the pride of every parent for their child to join the U.S. Army. Surprisingly, when her daughter Kathy joined the U.S. Army, Tina was a worried woman. I didn't understand much about the military. And in my head, I just thought my child was going to die or something. However, when her grandson Judah was born, Tina was an inspired woman. When she did her term in the military and got Judah, Judah brought me so much joy. Hi, Oma. Honey. Hi. You can take him too. He's my grandson. And I decided to name this restaurant after him because I was watching him as a little baby and uh, working overnight. But when Judah started walking and was very active, I was no longer able to do overnight work. And I started cooking to supplement my income. So I would work during the day and uh, cook and watch Judah instead of going to overnight work. So from there I figured, you know what? It's Judah that has made me think different, think outside the box. And I said, if I open a restaurant, I'm going to name it after him. Initially, Tina had envisioned the Judah's Kitchen as a restaurant solely serving Kenyan cuisine. And this is how they look like. However, fate 
had a different plan for her. As word spread of her delicious dishes, people from various West African countries started to flock to her restaurant. We have at least one or two things from different parts of Africa that brings people together. My dream is to bring Africa together so we can be one happy family. That's my big dream. I'm hoping I could get a chef from Liberia, a chef from Nigeria, another chef from Kenya, so I'm not the only one cooking everything like now. Fascinated by the flavors and aromas of West African cuisine, Tina expanded her menu to include dishes such as fufu, a goosey, and the red snapper fish, much to the delight of her growing customer base. The other fish that people really love, the West Africans, because as you know, this is an African restaurant. So I'm catering for Kenyans as well as the other African countries. So this is red snapper. They love this red snapper. It's a little bit more expensive than tilapia, but I sell it. I sell a lot of it. Surprisingly, her fufu delicacy is very popular among her American customers. I love the okra. When I come here, I always get the okra soup, jollof rice too, fufu, everything. Yeah, I, I particularly come here for uh, just a goosey fufu and jollof. That's my go-to when I come here. That's the only thing I eat when I come here, so. That's the only thing I could tell y'all guys that I tried from here. The goosey soup and uh, fufu and jollof. That's the only thing I get. It's interesting that Americans are eating fufu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because uh, fufu been going uh, viral recently over the phone, like on social media. Everybody been eating fufu and stuff like that. Everybody been wanting to try fufu. Everybody been seeing them dipping in the soup, all that. So, you know, we just came here. They got it here, so we come here for it, you know what I mean? And it's not just the Americans. In one corner of the restaurant sits Mike Njenga, enjoying a traditional Kenyan meal of ugali and mbuzi fry. Judas restaurant, happened to milk and cooler lunch, dinner, at times breakfast. So, kalo ni wani mekuja, ni mekuluga mbuzi. Then after that, ka juice wana kona ready made juice still. And tumekuwa poa kwa watu tumekuwa tukijaga hapa siku yote juu ndio Kenyan food tumekuwa tukiamini within the area Ireland town. Kuna mapengo da pata food kama hii. Yeah. Apart from this double crazy chakula zingine za but from Kenya anything na kuja hapa kuna fish kuna chapo chipo kila kitu managu everything. Yeah. And this you can see ni nyama imepikwa fiti. Chemusho ikapikwa tu mafuta ka ugali kila kitu imeiva ni chakula tamu sana. On the other side JB and his friend are waiting for their favorite dish of chapati and dengu. The most unique thing about this uh, restaurant is that it gives us a test of home, um, away from home. Uh, we get, you know, about items in the menu that, you know, we had when we were little kids and never had a chance to have them again until we got here. So that makes this place quite unique and uh, one of a kind. Yep. Is there any specific food you like? Uh, more into chapondengu, so that's, I, I have that for breakfast, lunch and dinner. <laughs> so, <laughs> nothing beats that, you know, you know after a hard day's work, working out, running, doing all kinds of activities for the day. Yeah, chapondengu hits the spot. Absolutely. Yeah. The aroma of spices moving gently through the air creates a warm and inviting atmosphere that makes the Judas kitchen a home away from home for many. Yeah, I, believe it or not, it is here and uh, we're enjoying it daily. I mean, there's a store right next here that sells Ndengu and uh, a restaurant here that makes Ndengu, so perfect combination. Just like any other serious business, Tina has her fair share of challenges. The biggest one being finding skilled workers who can recreate the authentic flavors she desires. I, I really need workers. It's amazing the kind of business that God has opened in my hands. I say, God, you answered my prayer because I had been praying for five years to take that step of opening this restaurant. And then when he gave it to me, it's two years and I don't have workers. In her quest for talented chefs, 
she appeals to the Kenyan government and the U.S. State Department of Labor to facilitate the process of acquiring chefs from Africa. It's not very easy to come just like that, but I'm hoping that uh, the Kenya government and uh, the uh, Labor Department in America can work together to give me at least an expert. Despite the challenges, Tina's dedication and commitment shines through. Her customers have become her biggest cheerleaders, leaving five-star reviews that ultimately led her to being voted the best restaurant in Allentown within just two years of opening. My customers nominated me, which means they love the food, and my reviews speak for itself. I've been in business for yeah, almost two years now, a year and a half, two years in November, and I have uh, 232 reviews at five star. I really didn't know what it meant, but I'm just beginning to realize it's a big deal in America to have five star as a new restaurant. So I thank God so much. Not only does she cater for locals, Tina also has the privilege of serving prominent personalities. They include Ken Lusaka, the immediate former Speaker of the Kenyan Senate and now the Governor of Bungoma County in Western Kenya. She also had the privilege of serving dinner to the Mayor of Allentown. The restaurant has even reserved a special place for its younger customers, offering the Judas wings, a delicious chicken wing dish crafted especially for the kids. She makes really, really good wings. We call them Dajuda wings. They're like a sweet and spicy wings. Outside of the restaurant's walls, Tina also extends her culinary expertise through outside catering services, satisfying test buds at conferences, weddings, and various events. She never misses the chance to express her gratitude to her loyal customers, acknowledging that it is their support that allows her dreams to flourish. I value you guys. You made me get this award. Thank you very, very much for always coming to try out different recipes at the Judas Kitchen. Tina's message to others is simple yet powerful. Follow your passion and turn it into a business. In life, you can be anything you want. In life, the possibilities are endless. Just stay focused, pursue your dreams, don't shy away from starting anything. I never knew where starting a restaurant would lead me, but it seems like we are going somewhere. Okay, na pilo utataka. It's spicy already, the goat stew is spicy. As she shared stories of her journey, Eli Jangugi, a loyal customer, passionately speaks about how good food has the remarkable ability to harmonize people from all walks of life. When we come here, uh, you go on the line waiting for you to be served. You hear somebody talk kissy, saying anke, and the other person says minembe. You know that is a lawyer. As you wait, you see somebody else saying nadi. And then you wait again, you hear a kamba saying kuiliata. And then you find another person within a short not uh, uh, not long, then you hear uh, another person saying, Aterere, Uemweda. And to surprise people, a place where there could be many languages, including people who will be saying, Karo, Yoruba, from West Africa, we find it here. It would be like a Babylon. But the one thing that has made us look good and in harmony is good delicacy. Good wonderful African food. Healthy food, tasty, and wonderful. So if you are anywhere, you are coming from Kenya, you are coming from other state, visit this place. It's Allentown, it's about 50 miles from Philadelphia, and you are not going to regret it. You'll find the food from any part of Africa. Asked about her future plans, Tina speaks about the possibility of opening a Judas restaurant in the Kenyan capital of Nairobi. One of the, my nephews, uh, Levi, asked me, Aunt Tina, now 
This is the Judas kitchen and now you have another grandson, Benjamin. Are you going to open another restaurant and name it after Benjamin? And so, the Judas kitchen with its tantalizing dishes and warm ambience continues to serve as a haven for those seeking an authentic taste of Africa in the heart of Allentown, Pennsylvania. My name is Bonventure and this is Moving Pictures Kenya, connecting people, inspiring Africa. Are you in business? Then serious business is for you. Contact us and we'll be happy to feature you here on Serious Business.